Hi you all, welcome to this second video of anatomy and physiology of the ear and in this video I'll tell you more about the anatomy and physiology of the middle ear. Have a look at those two pictures. You'll see two times the ear, the whole ear actually, which spilled up out of the outer ear, the middle ear that is highlighted below, and the inner ear. And to repeat it, have a look at the other picture, you'll find the outer ear that is built up by the auricle and the auditory canal here. Then you'll see, or you see here, the eardrum, also called the tympanic membrane, as a boundary between outer and middle ear. And then here you see the middle ear, where three important structures are inside. And those three important structures are the ossicles, the stapes, the incus, and the malleus. Three tiny little bones inside of your middle ear. And at the right side of this picture, you see the inner ear, the structures of the inner ear, the cochlea, and the semicircular ducts. So what is the function of the middle ear or what is the physiology of the middle ear? The middle ear matches an airborne acoustic signal with the fluid medium of the cochlea. More about this on the next sheet. Have a look. The function of the middle ear is to transmit acoustic vibrations from the tympanic membrane to the oval window. Have a look in this picture. The function of the middle ear is to transmit acoustic vibrations that get onto this structure, the tympanic membrane, onto the oval window, which is situated here behind the third of the three little bones. So an acoustic signal gets through the external acoustic acoustic meatus or the external auditory meatus onto the eardrum, onto the tympanic membrane and gets further processed via the three little bones, malleus, incus and stapes and then gets onto the oval window and behind the oval window is the inner ear. So at the end of this video clip I'll get back to this picture and explain it again. So keep those thoughts in your mind. Now I'll tell you more about the anatomical structures of the middle ear. Have a look. As I said earlier, the middle ear consists of three important bony structures, three very little bones, also called the ossicles, the malleus, the incus, and the stapes. First of all, we have a look at the malleus hammer in Nederlands. The malleus is the first of the three bones, the first of the three ossicles, consisting of a manubium, a neck, and a head. And with the manubium, it attaches to the tympanic membrane, as you can see here. The malleus is like 9 millimeters long and like 25 milligram tiny, 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 not heavy at all. Those three are the smallest bones of our body. I'm impressed by it. Let's go on to the next one. See as the second ossicle, the incus. It's this structure. The incus is the middle bone of the three bones and it articulates with the malleus and with the stapes. And the incus also consists of different parts. It consists of a head where it articulates with the malleus and it consists of a lenticular process or also called the long process where it articulates with the stapes. And the incus is even smaller, but a tiny little bit heavier. The incus is 7 millimeters long and like 30 milligrams. 
the third and last of the three middle ear bones is the stapy. Stijgbeugel in Dutch, it consists of a head, and with this head it articulates with the incus, it has a neck, which is this round bow, and it has a foot plate. And with this foot plate, it rests inside of the or in the oval window. And as I said earlier, behind the oval window, you find the inner ear. And the stapes is the t tiniest bone of our human body with like three and a half millimeters diameter or square millimeters actually and four milligrams. So small. So let's go on. Those were the three important tiny little bones, also called the three ossicles, malleus, incus, and stapy. Inside of the middle ear, there are two more important structures. They are called the tympanic muscles. You can see them here. You see the stapedius muscle and the tensor tympani muscle. Actually, inside of the middle ear, you only see the tendons of those muscles. The muscles themselves are hidden inside of the bone. Listen to my voice, I'll tell you more details. Those two muscles are the smallest muscles in the human body. The stapedius muscle is like 6 millimeters long, and the tympanic muscle is like 25 millimeters long, so very, very short. Let me start with more detail about the stapedius muscle. As you can see, the stapedius muscle is embedded in the posterior wall of the middle ear. Excuse me, I cannot find my mouse, it's here. As you can see, the stapedius muscle is embedded in the posterior wall of the middle ear and in, it inserts into the posterior neck of the stapes. So when the stapedius muscle contracts, the stapes is rotated posteriorly. Okay, the innervation of this muscle is by the facial nerve, which is cranial nerve number seven. Let's go on into more detail about the tensor tympani muscle. And again, I need to move my mouse here excuse me for that, to find it back. Here I am. Have a look. This is the tensor tympani muscle. It arises from the anterior wall of the middle ear space and superior to the orifice of the Pustachian tube, also, co also called the pharyngotympanic tube. Here it arises and the muscle inserts, as you can see, into the upper manubrium of the malleus. You saw it. So, when this muscle contracts, it pulls the malleus anterior medially, so to the front and to the inside of the middle ear. And when it does this, when the muscle contracts and pulls the malleus to the front and to the inside of the middle ear, it reduces the range of movement of the tympanic membrane. You can imagine, let me first find my mouse back. You can imagine that when this muscle contracts, this part of the malleus, called the manubium, is pulled to the front and the inside of the middle ear. And that it so it stiffens the tympanic membrane, and for sure, then it reduces the range of, move, of movement of the tympanic membrane. Okay, so both muscles, as I said, are only with their tendons inside of the um, middle ear space, the muscles themselves lie inside of the bones. So what is the indirect function of those two little uh, muscles? The stapedius muscle moves the uh, stapes and the tensor tympani muscle moves the 
Melia. They help in, by this, they help in reducing the strength of the signal that later on reaches the inner ear to protect the inner ear from damage. Imagine you have very high intensity of a signal. Imagine you are in a, in a disco with very loud music. Those both muscles will try to protect the inner ear against loud noise because they reduce the transmission of the signal. Let me show this to you with the tensor tympani muscle as a... Imagine you are in a very loud disco. Your tensor tympani muscle, this one, wants to help you, wants to protect the inner ear of damage, from damage by two loud noises. So, this tensor tympani muscle contracts and then pulls the malleus to the front and the inside of the uh, middle ear and by this stiffens actually makes the tympanic membrane minder uh, less movable I'm sorry the tensor tympani muscle makes that the tympanic membrane can uh, move less and so it cannot transmit all the sound waves that it get onto the tympanic membrane the tympanic membrane will still transmit sounds but with a lower intensity and the same is with the stapedius muscle that um, via the stapes um, reduces the transmission of sounds to the oval window so to the inner ear as protection So, one last time, the function of the middle ear, so the working of those three little bones, malleus, incus, and stapes, and the two muscles, stapedius muscle and the tensor tympani muscle, the function of those structures is to transmit acoustic vibrations that get onto the tympanic membrane to the oval window and thereby to the inner ear. Sound waves get onto the tympanic membrane. The tympanic membrane moves and gives this, those sound waves in a mechanical way further through those three little bones onto the oval window lying behind the stapes. And via the oval window, the sounds get further transmitted to the inner ear. And the hearing part of the inner ear is the cochlea. Have a look onto the next video, watch it and listen to it. And if you now want to know which literature I used, have a look at those two books. Bye and see you in the next video.